All right, everybody. Not being a professional YouTuber, I forget to uh, document stuff very well. But so I was called in to work on a Series One two horse variable speed machine today. Actually, very similar to this one that I'm using. Um, I'd actually gone and looked it over. What was that? The end of last week, and had told them that their variable speed pulley. I pulled this cover here. It was making terrible knocking noises. And as I expected, I found chunks of the key, chunks of the bushings, and the broke off screw that holds the key in for the motor pulley. So anyways, we quoted them replacing the motor shaft because I could see enough of it to see it was totally wiped out. And new belt, new pulley because we figured it'd trash the pulley. So today, all the parts had arrived. I went and tore it apart. And lo and behold, <clears throat> It has a different armature in it in that motor now we've never seen one like this this thing is about an inch to, I didn't measure it exact probably inch inch and a quarter longer than any two-horse Bridgeport we've ever seen now it appears to be a very late production model of probably the Singapore runs they made a bunch of these in Singapore in like the 90s if I remember right and I'm not quite sure what the deal is the motor was an American just like this, or US motor like this one has on it, but uh, made in Mexico. So anyways, even the parts supplier we deal with doesn't even show this armature. So instead of putting a new one in, I brought it back. I was gonna TIG weld it, it hammered the keyway out. The shaft itself is pretty good, but it hammered out the keyway. I was going to TIG weld it out, but I was having some holy fits with the gas supply in my TIG. I don't know what's going on, something's plugged up. So I ended up just MIG welding it and uh, running along the two hammered out sides of the key. I've stuck it in the lathe, got it, uh, grabbed it here, and then it's got a center in the shaft on the other end. And cut it down close, but I ran into the issue that I was a little worried about to start with. And that is that it warped the shaft slightly. Um, you know, I ran beads weld down each side. <clears throat> shaft pulls toward the weld. So I cut it down as far as I could with a goat without getting in any virgin material there and decided then I'd come over here and cut out the keyway slot. What I'm hoping, we'll see if this theory works, <clears throat> is that, you know, there's very little added metal. You know, the weld bead was way bigger than what it needed to be. That was the downfall of having to run it with MIG is I'm limited to how small of a bead I can run. And anyways, it pulled quite a bit. So I'm hoping that by cutting back off as much of that material as I can, that the shaft will try and settle back into where it was. Now, at this point, I'm going to go check this thing, uh, probably try and get it between centers and spin it. If it's still tweaked, I think I'm going to set this thing up in the press and start tweaking on a little because I really want it straighter than what it is before I make my finished cut. So I'll show you guys what I got when I get this pulled out of here. All right, so I've stuck this thing back in the lathe, and I'll show you what I'm seeing here. We'll roughly zero this out. So we've got, right now, we're showing about 10 thou worth of warp in it, and it's done exactly what you would expect it to do, right? We've got weld bead along both sides of that. It has pulled, and it's shoving out the other direction now. It is not as bad as it was before I cut down the keyway because I removed a lot of material and it is, you know, trying to go back where it came from. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut down what I did before is I cut until I just touched. I don't know if you can see it in the glare, but right there I just touched the backside and then I stopped. And so the step that I've got here at the edge of my weld is how much it was deflecting by before and that's quite a bit worse than what I've got now so I'm going to go ahead and do that again because the more material I remove the weaker the weld basically is and the more it wants to go back to where it used to be and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing out set it on some hardwood blocks and try taking a three pounder and a hardwood block on the backside and just beat on it a little bit and see if there's enough tension in it wanting to go back to where it wants to be to actually make it move at all. We'll find out. It's easy enough to take it in out of the lathe. If that doesn't work, I'll resort to putting it in the press, but that's kind of last ditch effort. All right, so my smacking it with a hammer trick did absolutely nothing. It's a little too stiff for that. So we're getting ready to try another stunt. 
What I'm doing is I need to, I, by the way, I put it on my surface plate. I couldn't figure out a way to show that on the video. Um, cause I had to hold it up with one hand. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bit of a step here cause the bottom half of the pulley that goes on this motor slides on easy and then they've got, I don't know, it's thou step or something where it kind of press fits onto here. So anyways, so I had to hold it hanging off the edge of my granite plate, but there's definitely, it's bowed in here right where the, uh, weld is at. So what I'm doing is that's 3 8 keyway. So I found myself this piece of 3 8 scrap, cutting a couple pieces of that, going to put a piece at each end, and then we're going to stick this in the press. Now here's what I got to be careful of is <laughs> to balance it out from cutting out the keyway, they've core drilled a hole all the way through here. So if I just go pushing like mad on the side of this, there's a good chance of collapsing that hole in and wrecking the integrity of my shaft. So, I've got some cast iron blocks, V blocks, um, that were part of a machine way, actually a, a KOLE tool and cutter grinder that I scrapped out. And I'm going to use one of those V block chunks that I chopped out of that as a sacrificial piece in there. There we are. To push on the other side. So, I'll show you when I get it all set up. And then uh, hopefully all of this results in a video where I'm showing you it's amazing, it worked great. But we're about to find out. All right, I decided to chop off a new piece of this thing. I didn't like the ones I'd cut before, so. This is uh, part of the slides on a K.O. Lee tool and cutter grinder. Um, I parted it out because I'm turning the head off from it into the biggest, baddest tool post grinder that was ever invented for lathe, so. I didn't have any use for the uh, tool and cutter grinder, but I got a lot of use for a tool post grinder. So anyways, I save all kinds of junk like this. You never know we're gonna need it. And in this instance, it's perfect because it's a uh, V that's relieved at the bottom so it won't be trying to push on the spot on that shaft that has that uh, balancing hole in it. It's cast iron, so it's a lower tensile strength than what the steel that shaft's made out of is which I'm hoping means that we leave marks on this and not on the shaft. Now we do have the danger here that I have seen cast iron V blocks getting pushed on before that split down the middle and throw pieces, but we're gonna hope that we never get to the stage of having to push on this this hard, so. Anyway, that's what we're working on. I'll show you when I get it set up in the press. All right, so here's the theory. We got this thing in the 75 ton dake here. And I've got these settings. I didn't want to push on the edge of my key shaft, but if I put a dimple or ripple in the bottom, I don't really care. We're gonna try giving a little push on this and see what it does once. I think uh, just for grins and giggles here, I wanna try and put a catcher of some kind. I don't want this thing to just fall out the bottom of the press if it all of a sudden shatters. All right. I don't know if you guys saw the mess I got going on in the shop here, but it's crazy. I've got multiple projects going on simultaneously. It's the worst disaster in here it's been since we moved in. All right. We're going to give her the berries now. All right. Gonna see what that did. We're gonna go put her back into the lathe and see what we got. All right, guys. I'm sure you've heard the old adage that it's better to be lucky than smart, and I gotta be getting pretty close here. Look at this. We have got one thou worth of run out. We are not monkeying with that anymore, okay? These pulleys have play in them. You know, it's just nylon bushings. Like, there's nothing in here that cares about a thou of run out. So we are stopping right there. And going to, I'm curious now, I didn't think of this, so. Yeah, it's still out in the direction it was before, but only about a thou. So what I'll do is I'll cut down until I'm as close as I can, and there'll be just a little bit of a feathery edge there then that I'll just touch in by hand with a stone is what we'll do. But I am tickled with how that turned out. The trick that I did with the press worked great on um, that uh, cast iron block did not leave any marks on the shaft i'm going over to look now because i didn't think to check i'm curious to see uh oh yeah you can see where it mashed into the block there so that's exactly what i was hoping the block took the abuse <clears throat> in the uh anyway i am absolutely ecstatic 
that is making this a completely usable part and we'll go finish cutting it now and put the motor back together all right so so shiny in here it's hard to tell but anyway it came out just fantastic um it was worn back oh probably to about here down this side and then probably a 30 second or so missing down that side of the key and we've got her spiffy back up the pulley that runs on that actually doesn't want to go on right now it's a little bit on the snug side it'll go on a little ways but that's not the fault of the shaft it's because i just put brand new bushings in here um sometime i'll show you a video on that i'm sure there's more videos on youtube but it's a synthetic bushing material and you got a epoxy men but there are a few tricks you ought to know about that but i just didn't have time to show that today but anyways so what i got to do they're quite common like down around the middle where they got a little rib on them on each end they tend to be a bit fat there so it's pretty common for us to have to go in here with a fine half round file and just touch that uh i'll set it down here maybe i can show you down in right along here where that center groove is at i got to get in there and hit that with a half round but then it'll slip on there 